Hi guys, welcome to this um, quality check of the frame I just received from Gearbest. I purchased this uh, after uh, a video from UAV Futures, the guy Stu, Stu, whatever he's called, weird Australians, was reviewing the Furry B Furiton and he said it was amazing and I was looking for an X-frame a little more decent than the had uh, the one I had before it was the X210 from Real ACC. So I thought, well, let's just give the Fury Ton Fury B frame a try. But big, big surprise when I received it. It was in this package. Yes, that is right. It's a Holy Bro frame. And I checked it. Um, I compared it to the Fury B Fury Ton. And they are the same. Conclusion. It's a holy, holy bro frame, not a Furiton Furibi frame. I'm gonna unwrap it now. It comes uh, in plastic and bubble plastic, and then some standoffs, I think. And this machine you see in the background is a ultrasonic device, and this is a ultrasonic probe which I calibrated already to carbon fiber on my Epiquad lowrider and also on this frame the XS220 from Real ACC it's the stretch version of the X210 Okay, here we have the Furiton Fury B frame. As you can see, the holes are um, not straight, but but uh, diagonal or whatever it's called, so that the the bolts they uh, don't stick out of the frame. I think that's a disadvantage because this way um, more forces are applied to your bolts thus making them more likely to break but anyway you're not obligated to use them you can also just turn the frame around and then use normal bolts but I'll use them with these um, sunken bolts I think they're called in English <clears throat> so bolts standoffs side plates top plate but I'm gonna check for uh, delamination in this frame with my UT probe I'm just gonna explain what I'm doing on the go. So now I put my UT probe. Oh, wait, let me put my UT device in the screen. Like this. And here you can see the bottom echo, they call it. Which means, you never guess, it's a bottom echo and everything that comes in front on the left side of this bottom echo indicates a delamination because this UT probe emits um, ultrasonic sound into this into this frame which reflects on the bottom then comes back in the UT probe and then it calculates by the sound speed the thickness of it so if something comes in between like say uh, a delamination or like some filth in the that was uh, processed in during process it will skip up in it will hop up in front of the bottom echo so now I'm just going to slide around with the probe and I will start on the arms usually around the holes 
they drilled in or CNC'd in or whatever it in you can see some de little delamination I don't think that's too worrying but if it's in the middle of the frame especially on the places where a lot of force are applied during crashes I consider it a con I just started out with this a few months ago uh, so I'm just learning on the go about this quality checking of carbon because usually I don't do carbon with this machine I do metal and in the metal industry there are a lot of procedures you can follow so you don't really have to think about what you're doing well you actually do have to think about it a little bit but you don't have to reinvent the whole process if you know what I mean as you can see the frame is four millimeters thick it's showed here and this arm is completely free of delaminations now I'll go to the, <coughs> the other arm I put this cup here because I need some water every now and then to make a coupling else the UT sound won't get into the frame and if you ask yourself what is this in front jumping up and down <coughs> I um, think it's um, like a ground skip from the sound not going into the frame but just skipping through the water from this side to this side because it stays stable I don't think it's inside the frame I just think it's uh, a skin effect like say so nothing worrying about nothing to worry about but I must admit up until now the frame looks pre pretty uh, well manufactured lamination wise and that's all, I, all I'm saying by the way I'm not gonna say it's a sturdy frame I'm not gonna say it's a good designed frame only thing I can say I can conclude out of this um, testing I'm doing right now is that the, la the lamination process seems really good at Holybro I wish I had bring my other frame with me to the ghetto studio I'm in right now um, so I could show you what a delamination looks like but you can also look at another video I have it's a really long video uh, where I'm checking another frame I don't even remember which one but there I, I think I do have some delaminations um, I think I already did this arm but let's do it again maybe Okay, and now going to the middle part. Oh, pleasant surprise! No, le no delaminations in this frame. I had uh, another frame I also checked but didn't uh, video it. Video it. I did it fi didn't film. And it was the, <laughs> the copy of a copy. It was a X210 clone from my RC Mart. It was only like 15 euros and I thought, well, let's give it a try. What the fuck? This thing was made out of air or something. There were only delaminations inside of it. And uh, I broke the frame in like three days, I think. It's 
So yeah, that was my video about the delaminations. My conclusion about this frame that it, the delaminations are not present. Thus, the laminating process, Holy Bro, has got locked down. I can also do the little parts maybe. Didn't expect it to go this quick. This is the top plate. As you can see, my bottom echo just moved from the 4mm line to the to the 2mm line so that says it's 2mm thick by the way the complete range in here is 5mm uh, so this is 0, this is 5 and this middle line is 2.5 seems really good also as well side plates Side plates are a little thinner, they're 1 8 thickness. Seems good. I'm just checking if I can feel the difference as well. I feel a little, little, little difference in uh, thickness with my finger. So that the machine is not uh, fucking with me. To check the machine is not fucking with me. And if you wonder what the fuck this is, this is the table underneath. It's made of aluminium, I think. And my sound speed is not adjusted to it, so it's not uh, <clears throat> the things you're seeing are not right. Well, guys, thanks for watching this up until so far. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to put on this frame. Like I said in the beginning, I bought this frame because Stu was really enthusiastic about the Furiton Fury B. And the Furiton Fury B comes with these motors. They're like 8, 9 euros at Gearbest, so I thought I'd give it a try. But I can see where they save some money. That's in motor wiring. Dude, are you sh... If, if I would have bought a 4-in-1 ESC, I had to attach extra wire to it. Why? And I, I think even now I have to attach extra wire to it because I like my ESC to be as close to the middle as possible. And my ESC is here. Sec, here it is. This is my ESC. It's a uh, HL HL HGLRC 28 amps with 40 amps peak, and they were only like five or six euros, and they were so cheap. I thought, well, I give it a try. I don't know if it comes on the Fury Ton Fury B. Well, I'm not gonna add extra wire, but still, this is really short, man. I like the extra wire that comes on, on more expensive motors, I can use it for other purposes. But yeah, I understand on an 8 euro motor, they're not going to add in a lot of wire. So that's this is the motor I'm gonna, motors I'm going to use, these are the ESCs I'm going to use. I checked on the Banggood side, they also have the same ESC, it's also 28 amp and then it's not from HGLRC. But it's from another brand, I think Razor Star, and they are like double the price. <clears throat> but uh, the layout is the same, so I think the 
you can see it's the same as well. This thing I got on recommendation of uh, Joshua Bartwell. I got him in two other frames, they're great. It's the Matek PDB FC hub. I rate it up until 6S. I'm not gonna fly 6S, but if Joshua Bartwell says something is good, it's probably good. This is uh, some cheap ass Omnibus Clone F4 Pro V2. I have some Omnibuses, I like them because they have the Betaflight OSD on it. Which, to be honest, I never uh, actually tried, but I'm gonna use it on this one because for the first time I didn't buy a Rankem, I bought this thing. It's like the half price of a Rankem Swift. But of course you don't get the OSD like a Rankem Swift 2. And then I'm gonna add a huge uh, capacitor. It's 1000 uh, micro, yeah, microfarad at 35 volts. I saw a video from Drone Mesh. He said the 25 volts are better, but I have one 35 volt on another frame and it works great. So I'm not gonna try the 25 volts because don't change the winning team. This is my 12 volt LED. Got it from my RC Mart. Bastards. <coughs> And this is a red XT60 plug. Why red? I hear you ask. Because red is bad. Okay, that's the reason why I'm not a rapper. No, the red red ones obviously go faster than the yellow ones. And I'm gonna use some rubber standoffs to soft mount my FC. Um, I'm gonna use an X6B for a receiver, which is great. I'm gonna use these, uh, this Matek FC beeper, which is so freaking loud, I can hear my quad beep from a mile away. Compared to the cheaper beepers, this is a great <coughs> investment. goodies I'm going to add into it. Oh yeah, I'm going to use a VTX-03 from Banggood. So if you uh, want to see the end result, just ask uh, it in the request it in the comments and I might uh, upload a video about it or I might not. Because there are many guys doing this. So this is my thing, checking uh, delaminations in frames. And in the future I will upload some more. Well, thanks for watching. And see you in the future. Bye guys.